Hello. Welcome back to Sonia's Quilts and Embroidery. And today, we I'm going to show, I had a request to show um, how to make the trip around the world. Um, I'm going to try to... I have had many uh, comments on that I explain things so well and and that, you know, it's easy to follow my instructions and, you know, so I appreciate that, but sometimes I feel like I, you know, make it more complicated than it needs to be. First of all, in, pick, in our trip around the world, we need to pick our fabrics. Now, the way I pick my fabrics is I typically do five fabrics for a trip around the world design. I pick a couple of themed fabrics, like if you were going to do a... A one that featured cat uh, cats you could pick out you know three cat related fabrics uh, I would probably do like I've got here like maybe two that's got cats on it and then one that complements I won't be doing an Alabama one today um, I've got to get this done but uh, I've got a fabric here that complements and then I've got two solids to break up all these busy fabrics and I like to lay them Range them, start at the top with what I want started in the what I want in the middle, and then I put a solid here to break up these two, and then I will go with this hound's tooth after this one, and then the black to separate the hound's tooth and the. I don't know if you can see that well enough or not. The black to se separate. So I've got these just kind of laying sort of in a circle. And the way I do it is I start with the one I want to be the center. And I, I start mine by doing a three block. This this center, center row will be the only one that is unique to the quilt. It'll be the only one that's like this. And the reason I use this little, I call it a rabbit. Some people call it end, uh, end there and a beginner, but it cuts down on your thread. Uh, and because this is, you know, this has got 625 pieces. So it'll be a lot of thread. And that, that little ender and beginner, little rat that, that I call a rabbit, <clears throat> the little piece of fabric, it cuts down on all those threads. And there are other, other benefits to having one of these. If you've never, it's just a scrap piece of fabric. And uh, and I get this going, I won't use it as often. But I've got my three for the center. Then I'm going to start counterclockwise and go around my stack for this center block. Now I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do this using all five of the fabrics. But this quilt requires... For, these are five inch blocks and it requires me to have my rows 25 blocks long and what you do after you get to the you know end of your five blocks you start all over and just keep going now I'm sewing a white one which is the next one on my I'm sewing one to this end and then I'm also another one to this end so it and I'll show you what I mean So, we've got a white one at the beginning and a white one at the end. Now we're going to go with this gray print. These are some new Alabama prints I picked up um, at a place that I buy fabric wholesale and I, around, uh, around the middle of January, I guess. <clears throat> and I went back last week and they were it was completely gone. So, I'm glad I got three bolts of each. And we picked up the next one. And now that we have it pretty long here, we will just start and not use the rabbit anymore. It's long enough now that we can just do one right after the other and just clip them apart, pick up the other end. It does start getting twisted. 
if you do that for a few rounds, but just untwist it and just keep doing this. Now, what I do after I get after I get this black one on, I'm gonna show you. I I go ahead and I start. I it's 25 blocks long, but it's also 25 blocks wide, and I. Okay, I almost messed up. I didn't have my houndstooth one on this end. Got to watch that because it's so easy to get things off track if you're not paying attention to what you're doing like I almost did. But it's 25 blocks wide for a king. 25 blocks wide. You cannot, it cannot be an even number. This middle row right here keeps it from being an even number because you'll have on, on each side of this middle row you'll have 12 strips of 25 and the other side of this middle row you'll have another uh, 12 strips of 25 so the quilt will end up being 25 by 25 which is 625 pieces it takes you need to have cut about 138 of each color now we did one a couple of weeks ago and using I believe it was 15 fabrics and it was a drop-dead gorgeous quilt it was not a theme it was just um, basically some scraps we had laying around and we used the 15 uh, 15 different fabrics and I, it was absolutely gorgeous okay now we have our middle row started with our three in the center and we have the white the gray and the houndstooth and the black growing out all right I'm gonna lay this one aside now the way you do a trip around the world to keep it straight is this is the center block this is the pieces on each side of the center that will be where you start your your next row and you have to have two one for each side of this one so I'm gonna do and the, the center block will be this one and then we'll start with the white on each side and I'm gonna go ahead and sew two of them because after the center after the center row each you have to have there's matching rows for um, each each row after that there is a matching a, a mirror a mirrored row I was I, I would say more I guess more of a mirrored row than a matching it mirrors it from side to side which will form I'm gonna lay this this one aside and I will I'm gonna do all 25 of my uh, get all 25 of mine started and then I will just go and just grow them out to 25 blocks long hope that makes sense to you if it doesn't uh, let me know and I'll explain it better but I'm just get them, I kind of get them started and then I just sit here and to be honest completely honest with you how my brain works is I may sit down here and say okay I'm gonna work on this for one hour and then I've got to go in the house I've got to get my supper finished and you know it's getting late but I'm gonna work on this for one more hour and then I just I just work and see how long I can get it and then it don't take long of staying dedicated to your chair to get this one finished if I stayed at my chair and only got up to run to the bathroom or run get me a drink or run get something to eat uh, about a day and a half it would take to do this one all right I've got my two gray ones sewn on and then I'm gonna take this one and so the gray ones you always stay in the same order counter I do my like I said do mine counterclockwise I'm left-handed so I may do things backwards than other people but I do mine counterclockwise it just seems like it's easier to keep up with it that way and I'm gonna grow this one out to about this third this this gray one here now when I continue on with this but these two rows I will like I said sew them out to their 25 blocks long but I like to get all of my rows started and that way I can um, just sit here and run one right and, and run them all through clip them run them all through again 
clip them, but every time you run one a row through, you need to look to see which one comes next after the last one you've got on here. All right, I've got three rows started. So, like I said, this is the center. So we need to look to this two right here to pick out our next center. So the next center is going to be white. So we'll pick up a white, pick up two whites as a matter of fact, and we'll pick up a gray. And I'm doing a, a quarter inch seam. My machine is a commercial machine. A lot of people ask me about my machine. It's a Dirk op adler 281 and i have a my it come, it just came their foot does not come off you can't change the foot on this this machine only goes forwards and backwards no decorative stitch no, not even a zigzag and um so in the foot that's on it is a is a quarter inch foot uh i don't care how big you make your seams as long as you're consistent that's the most important thing is consistency but a quarter if you do a quarter inch seam you have a nice secure seam that won't pop open and it the bigger your seam the shorter you're going to your smaller your quilt's going to wind up being so I suggest doing a quarter inch seam that's just a good secure width steam uh, seam all right now I've got rows four and five started here and this is the center these two are the next ones so the center this time will be the gray and white I mean the gray will be the center of the next one so I'm gonna pick up that one and I'm just making my rows I'm just getting my rows all started get an anchor and so that I'll know where they start next and I'm gonna continue to do this until I have 25 rows and through the magic of YouTube editing, of which I don't edit, I just pause and come back and show you what I'm doing. But through that, this quilt will be made in just a few minutes. But uh, it's a lot of work going on. But I'm going to come back and forth and show you my progress. And I will come back after I have my 25 rows. And I will show you... Uh, what I mean by just getting my rows started and getting them counted and make sure I got 25 and then I'll show you what the next step is so I'll be back in one second but it's really gonna be about an hour okay so that didn't take near as long as I thought it would okay Now what we have is our all of our rows started. So in no particular order, uh, I've got them stacked up here. Doesn't matter what order they're in. Uh, they don't have to keep them in order at this point. This is our middle row, it's the longest because we did do all the different squares. So we're gonna start, we have a black one here. So we're gonna go to the next one. And it's very important and less confusing if you do both ends at the same time that was our last row we did right there with a white in the center and the gray on the ends this is the last last one we had to do so we'll pick up the other end of this row go ahead and sew the red one onto the blacks always staying in order always going the direction you started whether it be clockwise or counterclockwise always staying in the order that you started okay let's get that one out of the way pick up our next one our next one is only five blocks long and our next square is the houndstooth the rest of these are probably only three squares long I just want to get them started so I go back and show you how to put all of this together. You'll do this so many times 
and in this in the same order that you will just automatically know which one is next and if you see that I'm putting houndstooth on um, the end of several of these it's always gonna be with the gray but because there are 25 squares you have to go around your circle at least twice so you're gonna have some duplicate strips after the center one there are probably four strips four or five strips that will be um, have a, it'll have a it'll have a duplicate but it's not they're not sewn together I'll show you that I don't, I don't want to confuse you so I'm going to continue on and we're going to do both ends just like this and then we get and we're going to do this until our rows are 25 blocks long and they will grow fast that I said it would probably take about an hour to get my row started it only took about 15 minutes I've got some pinto beans on the in the and a big big chunk of ham that was left from Christmas that I had in the freezer I've got that instapot for supper and I'm gonna go in after a while and make okay this is a houndstooth one so we're gonna go to the black because the black is next after houndstooth it's black sewing black to me is one of the hardest colors to sew it's so hard to see if you're picking up more than one block at a time or and if you sew black thread on black fabric that is the hardest thing for me to pick out or to see if it's a nice stitch or if, you, if you're worried about your stitch and it's hard to see you have to most time I have to go out I have to take it outside black goes on houndstooth now I know I've got enough gray cut because I've cut a whole bolt I cut 15 yards of the gray but these other colors I didn't haven't cut enough so you'll be able to see your stack start going down really fast and I'll have to cut some more black, white, houndstooth, and the red before it's over. All right, after the black, it's the red. Pick up the other end and put another red. I'm doing another, I'm doing a personal challenge to prove to myself a money challenge I don't know if any of you watch my budgeting videos I'm probably not going to do any more budgeting videos on this channel uh, I know I, I call it a lifestyle challenge but um, I think people actually come here to watch um, my quilting videos so I've got another channel that I'm going to start because doing the budgeting is a very a, big, a very big passion of mine that's something I really enjoy <clears throat> but now we're gonna go with, after the red comes the white and I'm gonna do I'm doing a personal challenge I started at the beginning of the year and I'm gonna do intentional grocery shopping where that I decide what I want to cook I don't I don't really base what I'm gonna cook on what is in the pantry so much I do base it on what kind of meat I've got in the freezer uh, and it's about time I about I about cooked up everything I had in the freezer. I haven't bought meat since September, so it's almost time to buy meat again. And probably will go next payday and buy go to the meat market and get me some meat. But I'm doing a personal challenge of intentional grocery shopping. That means I decide what I'm going to buy. And I make out a grocery list. I do not go to the grocery store, do not place a Walmart order, nothing like that, unless I have got a list 
that I'm going by. And I, I, after I do my list, I go into the pantry and to the freezer and wherever else I need to go to check to see what I, if I actually, what I actually need. And I'm gonna see by doing intentional grocery shopping uh, how much money I save on my grocery budget every two weeks. After the white comes the gray. Heat got left on here in here all night last night. And it was like a sauna in here when I come out here. Because today it's supposed to get up to nearly 60 degrees. But tomorrow the high is gonna be 40. Now 40 degrees, my heater has a lot of trouble keeping this shop warm enough. So I don't know if I'll be able to even work out here tomorrow or not. That's the weather in the south. You have wet one weather one day and the next day you have another kind of weather. So Continue on through our um, 25 rows here. They'll be all be two two blocks longer when we get through, and we'll just keep doing that till they're 25 blocks long. And sometimes I get bored with that, and I'll switch it up, and I'll just, I'll just I'll just concentrate on one row and get it out to 25 blocks and then pick up another one and then I may pick them up the next time and run them all through one time with a block on each end and I just mix it up. The most important thing is to get your rows. It doesn't if you want to do a queen, this is a key this is gonna be a king. If you want to do a queen, you need to do uh this will measure about a hundred and a look about a hundred and ten by a hundred and ten, something like that. But if you want to do a queen, I would still do the 25 rows long for the length. And the width, I would knock it down to probably, let's see, you got to stick with even, you got to stick with odd, it has to be an odd number. So I'd probably go down to about 21, 21 blocks wide versus the 25 for a king. And this just continues on just like this. No no fuss, no muss, no, you know, no big no big mystery. It just keeps going. Pick up the next block in the in the line in the lineup. The way you've got your blocks lined up. And um we're gonna I'm gonna continue to do this until I get twenty-five until I get them all twenty-five long, and then I will come back and show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, we're back. I've got all 25 of my rows done. And it's time to start sewing all the strips together. All the 25 rows of 25, which is 625 blocks. And we are going to start sewing them together. I've got the middle one here and the two mirrored uh, pieces that go on each side. Now, how I like to do this is I like to omit this side and just work on this side so I'll take this down and I need to find a white center because we have two white here we need a white center here let me dig through my pile here until I find a white center here we go have a white center and then we would do a gray center next there we go and if you can see 
it starts forming the pattern that we're looking for. These will start making diamonds. These will start making, okay. I believe we are off here. Um, something is wrong here. Because this should land with a white right here. So, I can't see it right on top of, right right now. Okay, okay, it, this is right. This will make, this white will make a small diamond. So this is the end of the, this is the end of the white diamond that is in the center. And it starts making a larger gray diamond. The gray diamond gets bigger. And then the house tooth diamond will be even bigger. So this is right. This is the end of the white diamond. It will go, it's only three by three by three by three. So this is how we're gonna lay it out. Also we're gonna sew it together. So let me get to sewing some of these strips together. I'll sew one together with you. I'm gonna lay these across my lap so they're easier to find. Also, when you get a couple of strips, okay, now something's wrong right here. My center is not long enough. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, it is, it is long enough. All right, when you pull it like this, This one's too long. I've sewn an extra one onto this. So let me take that off, which is not a deal. And I guarantee if you count it, it's 13. I skipped the center block and I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, should have been 12 long, not counting the center block. Should be 12 on each side of the center. So let me get this taken off and I will sew this first strip together with you and then I will come back when I have it all put together and you can see but if you'll notice once we get you know five rows sewed together sewn together the end pieces will start forming a pattern and you can pick it. You can pick your next uh, row from the end pieces, because the end, the very bottom of the quilt, very top of the quilt, whatever, whatever you want to call it, will start forming its own pattern. So it will start out with a white, and then it'll go to the gray, and then it'll go to the houndstooth, and then it'll go to black. It'll go out in exactly the same pattern that you had the um, blocks laid out in. The exact same circle of blocks. It'll go out. It, it'll the ends will start forming that same pattern, the way you had it laid out. All right, got those taken off. And now. We're ready to sew them together. I used to, when I first time I ever made one of these, I drew a diagram, colored it in with colored pencils representing each fabric, and then I, it took a while to make one. But then after you start seeing the pattern form, you're like, oh, I don't need that diagram anymore. It's just a matter of repetition. <laughs>
it is very cold today in North Alabama. It's supposed to get up to 40 degrees, 41 degrees, but I don't believe it's going to make it. It took me about six hours to get all the rows made. I had to go back and cut some more black, some more house too, some more white, and some of the more, some more of the red print, which I've got to cut. I need a, I need a shoebox full of each one of those because I just got another order today for another queen like this. All right, so now we need. The one, the gray, white, and then gray, and I'm pretty sure that it next one will be with the houndstooth end on it. That's not it. This should be it. Yep. You see, it starts forming the same pattern that you had, white. And then it was gray, then it was houndstooth, and the next one will be black, and then it'll go to red, and then white, gray, houndstooth, black, and red. All the way to the end, you want to put 12 on for a king. We have the center one. We're not going to count the center. We need 12 on each side of the center. All right, I'll be back whenever I get this put together and show you the, finish res the final results. All right, we are at the last few inches of stitches right here we're gonna call this one ready to be quilted now I'm gonna take you outside because I like to make my pictures outside best light you can possibly get and a big surface that I can lay it down there's nowhere inside my shop to lay down anything and uh, but I'm gonna show you how this turned out and um, it took me about from I had it cut I had not count the cutting it took me about eight hours to put it together and that's AIS. That means that means blank in seat or butt in seat. I seen that on a TV show one time. And I thought it was funny, but it's you got to keep your butt in your seat to get this done. And um, I did work on it yesterday till I had to get my supper finished, and then I stayed in after supper, and then I came back out here today, and I've been working on this about three hours but it's all put together and I'm fixing to show you what it looks like I'll be right we'll be right back okay here it is all done I can't keep it spread out because right at night right now it's not quilted and there's absolutely no weight to it at all so it keeps blowing up on the edges there I think it turned out gorgeous as you can see, all the diamonds that was formed. And I think I had the fabric laid out just right. Get you a closer look at it. Had the fabrics laid out just perfect for a good balance. And there you have a king size trip around the world. That's my version. And I'm gonna stay with it because it has served me well. Um, has served me very well over the years. I've made probably 300 of these. Whoa, there went the wind. All right, thank y'all so much. If you enjoyed this video, if you got any, um, if you learned anything from it, whatever, you know, if you, if you think you'd benefit, I'm going to try to do more videos. I may not be doing that many videos right now, but I'm super, super, super busy getting a lot of work done on my house and I work every day out in the shop but I still have a house to run groceries to buy stuff like that but I am going to be doing more videos and I hope you enjoyed this one give it a thumbs up comment if you have any questions comment if you thought the quilt was pretty comment if it was explained where you can understand it um, be nice with the comments but any comment you give really helps me out. And I hope you have a, a great day and, and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.